You're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket on the SpaceX launch pad preparing for liftoff in just about 10 minutes from now at 7.15 a.m. Eastern Time. Good morning and welcome to the live webcast of the NROL 76 mission. I'm John Federspiel, a lead mechanical design engineer here at SpaceX, and today we are launching a classified payload for the National Reconnaissance Office from historic launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Now today's mission and final orbit are classified, and as such, we will conclude coverage of the primary mission following separation of the fairing. However, as we will attempt to land and recover the first stage, we'll continue to cover this secondary objective once the primary commission coverage has concluded. Now for today's mission, we'll be attempting another landing of that first stage back at landing zone one, or LZ1 as we uh, colloquially call it. And today's attempt will be in daylight, so we should have some incredible footage to share. You're looking at a, the SpaceX rocket on Khaled Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. Now this is the same launch pad that launched the Saturn V uh, as well as uh, numerous space shuttle launches. And SpaceX first leased this pad a few years ago and we started launching from this very pad at the beginning of the year. Uh, now some interesting things to see as you look at there, uh, obviously the Falcon 9 itself is in the center uh, of the image there and it is uh, being supported by the transport erector you can see at the forward end of the rocket just below the fairing, the fairing being the, uh, the very tip of the rocket, uh, the forward end of the transport director is supporting the rocket uh, at about the T minus four minute mark. You're going to see the forward arms of the transport director open up uh, and the transport director will recline back about a degree and a half. At liftoff, and when the nine Merlin engines fully ignite, that transport director will fall away uh, and the rocket will be released to uh, deliver its payload to orbit. There are still some uh, heritage structures around there as we continue to upgrade this pad for future launches. You can see some structures behind it that were there from the space shuttle era. And SpaceX continues to make uh, modifications to this pad as we continue to look forward for Falcon Heavy launches as well as crew from this very pad. Now that Falcon 9 launch vehicle does stand over 200 feet tall. It's about 12 meters in diameter, about 36 feet. And at liftoff, the thrust of that vehicle is equivalent to greater than five 747s taking off at the same time. As we mentioned previously, uh, we will be covering the landing at landing zone one for the first stage. And you'll see that pad on your screen. That is where we're gonna be bringing back the first stage at Cape Canaveral. And while that pad may look uh, small or a little bit deceptive, that is nearly 300 feet in diameter we did first successfully land at that pad about 16 months ago when we delivered 11 Orbcom satellites to low Earth orbit. And since that, mission's, since that mission, we've had two other successful landings with the most recent occurring on February 19th of this year. And as I mentioned previously, today's mission is classified and we will conclude coverage of the primary mission following separation of the fairing. But we are gonna continue to cover that land landing attempt after separation of the first stage from the second stage.
Stage one, feel a little closed out. We're just inside the six minute mark and all systems are go right now from Kennedy Space Center, pad 39A. Now, if you tuned in yesterday, you noticed that at about 52 seconds before liftoff, our launch director called a hold, hold, hold over the countdown net due to an out of family reading on a first stage sensor. Now we have hundreds of sensors positioned throughout the vehicle on the first stage, second stage, as well as our fairing that help us monitor all kinds of variables from acceleration, pressure, temperature, and numerous other parameters. And while this particular sensor did have a redundancy, this, it, the readings it was providing for us were out of tolerance. And so out of an abundance of caution, we opted to hold launch and replace that sensor in question. That replacement has been made uh, and we are currently go for today's launch. Right now, just coming up on the five minute mark here, we are concluding loading on the RP-1 onto our first stage. That is, uh, RP-1 is refined kerosene. That is one of our propellants for the mission. And we are topping off liquid oxygen as well on that first stage. And we're gonna keep topping that off for about two more minutes. We're loading over 1.1 million pounds of propellant on the first and second stage combined. Our loaded at this point in the count. Let's go back lower started. Cape Canaveral Let's and the speed. Kennedy Space Center have given us a go for today's launch. No issues to report from the range. We have been keeping our eye on some upper level winds. Uh, as of now though, looking into uh, the latest balloon readings, we continue to be go for today's launch. We do have a two hour launch window if anything were to come up, we would have the opportunity to potentially recycle and target the end of this launch window. And we do also have a backup launch opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Create one arms coming open. And we have just started pressing up the, the first stage in preparation for strong back retraction. And you can see actually the forward arms opening just below the payload fairing. And that strong back retracts back a degree and a half. And operators have confirmed that the TVC motions are good on our MVAC engine. The, the second stage engine. TVC being thrust vector control, how we position the engine and guide the stage into orbit. Three minutes. Stage one, box load, close out. And GNC verify stage two, TVC motion up. And we have stage finished loading liquid oxygen onto stage one. Strong back lower has ended, inclination 88 and a half degrees. And the strong back lower has also completed at its 80 and a half degree point right now. Vehicle switching to internal power. Now coming up in the final few minutes here, in the final two minutes, uh, we will have the terminal count uh, auto sequence in the final minute where the flight computer will enter into its startup mode. Uh, the final check of all our sensors across the vehicle will occur before we lead into startup. And you'll see the bright green flash at the base of the rocket where our T-TEB will ignite and act as the starter for our, our nine Merlin engines. Those nine Merlin engines capable of putting out uh, over 1.7 million pounds of thrust at sea level. And with that, we're going to uh, go silent over here and let you listen into the final minute and a half of today's counts before uh, on time, T minus zero at 7.15 a.m. Eastern time. Vehicles and stuff on. Gas goes on started.
FTS announced FTS is ready for launch. AFTS is ready for launch. BC, verify Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. Ground side gas closeouts complete. LD, verify go for launch. Go for launch. Stage 2, pressing for flight. T-minus 30. T-minus 20. Stage 1, pressing for flight. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Lift off at the top nine. Back in until it's begun. And Falcon 9 is delivering the National Reconnaissance Office's satellite to orbit right now. We just transitioned through Max Q. And we've begun chilling in the MVAC engine on our second stage. Trajectory is looking good so far. Coming up in about 20 seconds, we'll have main engine cutoff, Miko 1. That's where all nine Merlin engines of that first stage will shut down and we'll see stage separation. Stage separation will be actuated by four pneumatic actuators on the first stage. We have Eco. And we have main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And stage separation has been confirmed. And you can see the first stage there flipping back. Use the nitrogen thrusters. And S1 boost back burn. And the boost back burn of that first stage. This boost back burn will last about another 15 seconds. We use this to reorient the stage back to Cape Canaveral and fly it back from all the forward velocity it had over the Atlantic Ocean. And we also had a successful fairing separation of the second stage. As we mentioned previously, we will not be covering the remainder of the primary mission due to the nature of the classified payload on board, but we are covering our first stage as it's making a landing attempt back at landing zone one, and that's what you're seeing on your screen right now. On the right side is an onboard camera looking down from our interstage. Uh, 
that stage itself is uh, 12 feet in diameter and over 100 feet tall, so you're looking down the length of that stage and those grid fins also deployed, those grid fins guiding us back through Earth's atmosphere. On the left side of the screen, you're seeing our, our assets on ground tracking that rocket, the first stage as it's making its way back. Now that boost back burn was a three engine burn. Coming up, we're gonna have our entry burn also a three engine burn. The entry burn will happen just after the seven minute mark. first stage has passed its apogee. It was over uh, 130 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Those white puffs you're seeing are those uh, nitrogen thrusters on board, which we also use for controlling the vehicle and a guided descent back to landing zone one. Entry burn should be coming up in about a minute from now. You'll see three engines ignite at the base of the rocket. We use that to slow down all of the vertical velocity as the rocket is now falling back to the Earth's surface and accelerating. If you're just tuning in, we're watching the first stage as it's falling back to Earth uh, and a guided descent back to landing zone one. We have an entry burn coming up in about 15 seconds. Three engine entry burn. Stage one entry burn startup. And we've entered the entry burn startup. And we have ignition of the entry burn. This is a 25 second burn. Entry burn shut down. And we have shut down for the first stage. In about 45 seconds, we'll have our landing burn begin. That landing burn will last for about 30 seconds. And then we'll have touchdown of the vehicle. That landing burn is going to take us from going about 1,000 kilometers an hour right down to zero on the surface of Earth. Landing legs will deploy about Stage 10 seconds before land landing. Stage one just passed through transonic regime. Landing burn startup. And landing burn has hit startup and we have ignition. Let's see the 
landing lays a play in a few seconds. Touchdown. First stage has landed back at landing zone one. It's another good day for us at SpaceX. It's a beautiful sight to see. That is the fourth land landing of a Falcon 9 at landing zone one. And with that land landing, that's going to conclude our coverage for today's webcast. It is a beautiful sight, certainly, to bring back another first stage. We will be uh, putting that uh, rocket through some inspections and then getting it ready for another launch for a future mission uh, coming up in our, in our very busy uh, manifest for the remainder of the year. So with that, we'd like to thank the National Reconnaissance Office, uh, the range, the, uh, the FAA, as well as you, the viewer, for tuning in and watching us. Uh, if you'd like to keep track of our future missions as well as the progress of this mission, uh, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or check out SpaceX.com. And if you'd like to come up here and join the team and be part of the crew that makes all this happen, check out SpaceX.com careers. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you again soon.